Hi everyone. Hi everyone. Welcome back to my channel. So this video, in this video we're going to. <laughs> in this video we're going to study the science of volcanic eruptions. The learning competency for this is to recognize signs of an impending volcanic eruption. The specific learning outcomes are the following. First, you have to identify the different parameters used to monitor volcanoes and explain the common signs of an impending volcanic eruption. Let's start with the precursors of an impending volcanic eruption. The following information that you're going to see are commonly observed signs that a volcano is about to erupt. So these precursors may vary from volcano to volcano and of course your location. First is the increase in the frequency of volcanic quakes with rumbling sounds. So there is the occurrence of volcanic tremors. Next, there is an increased steaming activity accompanied by a change in color of steam emission. It's from white to gray due to entrained ash. Another precursor is a crater glow due to the presence of magma at or near the crater. Next are localized landslides and rockfalls which are not attributable to heavy rains. Then we have ground swells or inflation, ground tilt, and ground fissuring due to magma intrusion. We can also see a noticeable increase in the extent of drying up of vegetation around the volcano's upper slopes. Okay. Next is an increase in the temperature of hot springs, wells such as the Bulusan and Canlaon, and the crater lake like Taal. There will also be a noticeable variation in the chemical content of springs, crater lakes within the vicinity of the volcano. Next, we have drying up of springs or wells around the volcano. And lastly, a development of new thermal areas and or reactivation of old ones. So with all of that precursor, we can say that most volcanoes provide various types of warnings before an eruption begins. So some volcanoes, especially those that have not erupted for a long time, might display obvious precursor of reactivation months to weeks before an eruption. Okay, So some volcanoes might explode without warning, and we call it a phreatic eruption. Okay, This is also known as the steam blast eruptions. These events could occur with little or to zero warning, as superheated water flashes to steam similar to what happened at Mayon Volcano in 2013. This also happened in Antake Volcano in Japan last 2014. As you can see, there are people who are hiking or visiting the volcano, and it suddenly erupted. Now, the assessment of volcano status is based on different parameters that can be observed. So, is it quiet or in normal state? Is it in state of unrest? Is it expected to erupt? Or is it erupting? So, all of this can be used to determine the hazards. Okay. Now, volcanologists often use combination of as many data available from different parameters used for evaluation. For example, the number of earthquakes as recorded by the seismograph may increase from background levels of 0 to 5 per week and may escalate into 100s in a day. So this is further confirmed and supported by increasing number of earthquakes felt by the local people. So in addition, other parameters such as gas measurements and water acidity may also show signs of increased trend. Now, what are these parameters? What are the equipment or instruments that we can use? And what are the things that we need to observe? Okay, so those are the things, those are the stuff that we're going to talk about. Now for easy note taking, so make a table like this, then just fill it up. Now let's start with the first parameter, which is ground deformation. Ground deformation refers to the surface changes on a volcano such as subsidence or sinking, tilting, or bulge formation. Okay, this is due to the movement of magma below the surface. Deformation changes at a volcano, such as those related to magnitude or location, 
may indicate that an eruption is about to occur. So what is the equipment or tool or instrument to use for ground deformation? Swelling of the ground surface can be detected by precise engineering methods of surveying using electronic distance meter or EDM. EDMs are used to measure accurately to millimeter changes on ground. Now there are different types of EDMs but we're not going to talk about it here. Deformation on ground is also measured using data of repeated measurements from Permanent Global Positioning System or GPS installed around the volcano. So these are the things that you need. You have the fiberglass enclosure, the data telemetry antenna, and the seismometer. So use of remote sensing images also help compare before and after features. One advantage of monitoring surface changes on a volcano from afar is that there is less exposure on the ground for volcanologists. It is also safer, but sometimes interpretation needs field verification. So what is the thing that you need to observe? You need to observe some subtle ground movements. Okay, so don't worry, these are all recorded by your instrument or equipment. Next, we have the geochemistry. Okay, under this, we have water and temperature and temperature. So let's discuss first water and temperature. So the technique to observe this parameter is direct measurement of temperature and chemistry of groundwater, spring water, or lakes using thermometer or thermocouple and a pH meter. So what are the things that you need to observe? First is the change in temperature. Okay. Second is the change in pH level. Crater lakes at the top of volcanoes are typically the most acidic with pH values as low as 0.1. So it's a very strong acid. Normal lake waters, in contrast, have relatively neutral pH values near 7.0. So the crater lake at El Chichon Volcano in Mexico had a pH of 0.5 in 1983 and Mount Pinatubo's Crater Lake had a pH of 1.9 in 1992. Okay, so the acid waters of these lakes are capable of causing burns to human skin, but are unlikely to dissolve metals quickly. So what are the causes of the acidity? So it's the carbon dioxide, sulfur dioxide, hydrogen sulfide, hydrogen chloride, or basically the gases that came from the volcano. <laughs> now, speaking of gases, this is another part of the geochemistry. So what you have to be cautious of are the types and rate of emission. Gases rise through vents called the fumaroles. It came from a Latin word meaning smoke. Sometimes, the concentration are high enough to create acid rain that kills the vegetation. And if you remember, that is one of the very visible signs of volcanic activity. So aside from that, scientists have several ways to measure the rate of emissions more precisely. So they can collect samples from vents directly using a gas monitoring equipment. They can also collect gas and water samples from vents and fumaroles and analyze them in the laboratory using X-ray fluorescence, as you can see in this one. Okay. However, it is still safer to use remote sensing instruments. So scientists will just mount or install infrared and correlation spectrometers from airplanes. For example, the airplane will just fly through the plume of gas and you will have the sample. These instruments read energy signatures, meaning the thermal output or electromagnetic frequencies. This is to identify and quantify the gases. So we have the cost spec or a correlation spectrometer for apply spec, SCANDOAS for sulfur dioxide, CO2 flux meter for carbon dioxide. Next, we also have the seismic activity, seismicity, or the volcanic earthquakes. These are used to detect occurrence of volcanic earthquakes. Okay? So what you have to be aware of this is the increase in number of volcanic earthquakes recorded. 
Now, people living near volcanoes may observe premonitory events before an eruption using the senses. Okay, so I divided this table into two. We have the senses and the observation. Okay, so first we have the visual. Under the sense of sight, you can see all of these observations. Intensified stream activity, change of steam color, drying up of vegetation, steams or water wells, crater glow at summit area, and increasing frequency of rolling rocks. Now we have auditory. It's the heart rumbling sound. Olfactory, the smell of sulfur. Okay, or a rotten egg smell. And for feel, it's the ground movement. Na stress ka ba? Se yongsang, mani saja, ba juseyo. Ah, iko heya de. Joa yo rang. Joa. Oh, iko, yo engine de.